Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Ark and we are going straight from where we left off on the last episode in our little one block hut made out of thatch and uh, today we're going to hopefully deal with two things that are going to help you on your way. The first one is to upgrade this to something a little bit more useful and actually protective and hopefully get our first dino tame as well which isn't going to be much but there's a couple of things we can point out that will kind of relate to all dino taming uh which you're going to basically need to know as you go through this now the one thing i'm going to uh, comment on before we start is, is to note that where we are now is basically we're going to be uh, if anything actually happens to us uh, we're going to have our cloth armor on us and we will hopefully have this little hut with us but in case anything happens because one thing you're going to realize on arc is that you are going to die at some stage and what you want to try and do is basically make it where you lose as little as possible when you do die don't forget you don't lose any experience or anything like that um you may lose your stuff though so it's, it's always good to kind of like keep your stuff in a box as best you can that you're not going to use so you know keep as little on you as possible so when you do ultimately die you don't lose everything now there's a couple of things i want to comment on uh because well one that's popped up on the screen there the spoilt thing and there's a couple of things i want to kind of point out as we go along now one major thing here is no matter what you do if you get meat don't throw it away if it gets spoiled. Don't throw it away thinking you're never going to use it or you can't cook it or whatever. If you can hold it, keep it, let it spoil if it's going to spoil. There is plenty of food in this game to keep you going. That meat's good, it'll heal you and it's better for you. But if you do struggle to get the meat, don't panic about stopping it from spoiling. Because spoiled meat is going to come in handy for us when we come to taming bigger dinosaurs now the other thing i want to comment on is that i'm not going to necessarily tame the most efficient way in the sense of there are taming pens you can build that will help you tame bigger dinosaurs safely and um, but i want to concentrate on doing things that you know are kind of what you are going to do as a standard player the, the taming pens thing to me is a little bit kind of cheap um i will cover the taming pens on another video at a later stage uh for all the different types of things and we'll go into more detail about taming other dinosaurs but right now let's get on with building our new base now right now all we can do is use this thatch we've got a little inventory from the last time a few things there we've obviously got our little campfire here now if you click E, which you would normally use to open things, it's just going to light the fire on and off. If you hold the E button and go into your access the inventory, you've got your things there. Obviously, we've not got much. So, there's a couple of things we want to do. Now, I've mentioned meat's not a necessity, so don't worry about meat too much. And it's close to night time. So, there's a couple of things we want to do. Is One, stay in our area. And two, get some levels. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to gather some resources because we're going to need wood so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get plenty of wood and thatch and our thatch obviously is a byproduct that you're going to need to use to kind of support buildings it, it's still used for quite a ways into the game now bear in mind you don't want to get yourself over encumbered because if you do you're going to struggle to get back to your base and if by any you know hopefully it won't happen but if if a dinosaur turns up and it's going to eat you you're not going to be able to run away as you can see you can't even jump but that in mind when you're over encumbered so you just drop into here and all you do is just drop everything in now if you one click as you, you know as i mentioned you'll you'll drop in one at a time shift click drops five you can just hit this transfer all and it'll transfer it all into there and um, now obviously it can only hold so much as you can see it's completely full on 15 now it's 15 slots so it'll hold 15 of items then obviously each of these items have certain stacks and weights and stuff like that now weight in a storage box doesn't really matter but you still got this here now as you can see wood only stacks to 100 thatches to 200 your stone's going to probably be about the same as wood so just bear this in mind when you're gathering stuff because obviously we're gathering wood right now so if we hold this as is we're going to struggle to put anything else in so i'm going to take my i'm going to leave the structure there because it's quite heavy it's a six but i'm going to take the flint back out and I'm going to stack the wood in there. So it's going to hold me a slot for the wood. I'm going to do the same with the hide. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully split that when it will let me. 
There we go. We'll transfer one, and we'll drag the one into there. Oh, no, it's just going to stack it. Okay, so it's not going to let me split it. That's fine. We'll hold it as is. Hopefully, we'll get another couple of hundred stacks there, and then we will um, have as much as we can hold. Now, the other thing I want to comment on is nighttime is not a good time to be out um, as a new player. You can get, you know, you can get your torch out and you can see all around you, but you're not going to be able to see close enough um, for the bad, the bad juju, the bad dinosaurs that are going to come out and basically just uh, turn you a new one. You'll hear that noise, which is, you know, that's it. It is now night time. So you want to try and stick close to your area. Now, a good practice to have if you're nearby your area, like you're working here. Now, I can gather up all these bits and bobs around here. So I'm just going to light my campfire. This is going to give us a bit of a glow. It's not going to cause any problems. And then I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to keep gathering as much as I can. I want fiber. I want berries. As I mentioned, you know, the medjo berries is going to come in handy on our next little project and all this that we're doing is gaining us levels now there is one slight problem we have which in this area isn't too bad we can deal with it but it is going to increase our hunger levels or well, basically it's going to make us want to eat more and that is the uh, little little frost marker there the little snow globe or whatever you want to call it uh, the snowflake that's the word i was looking for the snowflake that's telling us that um we're in a cold environment because it is nighttime. Obviously, the temperatures drop, so our hunger is going to rapidly start to increase because we're eating more food, keep us, you know, warmer, like it would naturally do. Uh, so just put that in mind. But obviously, because I'm gathering all these berries and stuff like that uh, in the pitch black, it's hard to see around here. Stay around my area. I can see my area there. It's lit up nicely. Now, don't worry about burning wood. There's plenty of trees around and they grow brack. You know, it's just... It's it's two things. One, it's giving you a location of where it is. Two, well, actually, it's three things, sorry. So, And the second one that I was going to comment on is the fact that it'll heat you up. So if you stand nearby to it, you'll not actually use as much. There you go. It drops it off. Uh, and obviously we can obviously go over to our our food if we've not got anything on our hot bar we can drag it over now there's a few things here that we don't necessarily need right now the seeds we do not need the seeds get rid of the seeds you're not going to use them for a while get rid of them but we are going to eat our berries which we place on our hot bar i always place it on zero so i know where they are i'm going to eat all the berries and as you can see we've got a little mark up there telling us that our food is filling up now, berries also give us a little bit of water as well, but obviously if we're going to struggle with water, we can just jump in there and, and it should hopefully fill up our water enough. Now, a couple of things we want to keep an eye out with water. Water is not a friendly place. There are piranhas, there are sharks, and there are crocodiles. Now, I'm calling them crocodiles, they are called something else. There's a couple of names for two types of crocodiles that are in this game. Um, but they are crocodiles and they will hurt you really bad and if you haven't stacked up on your speed they can actually catch up to you as well and there are a few other dinosaurs that are going to catch up now you can just see there we've got our little turtle dude there um, we may take a turtle as our first dinosaur um, it's either going to be a turtle or a dodo um, they're a pain in the ass to tame the uh, Pterodon, look at that. It's only a level 2 pterodon as well. Uh, they're just a pain in the ass because as soon as you try knocking them out, they're going to start flying off. Now, there's a couple of things we can do here to help us tame our dinosaurs. And I'm just going to talk about that before we break off for the daytime. And that is, um, we can knock them out by punching them. And obviously by using weapons. Now, if you use a spear, you're going to likely kill the dinosaur. Spears are not good to knock them out. You want blunt objects, so clubs, fists, and hopefully we can get a sling as well. So we're going to aim for getting a sling because it's a little bit easier because you don't have to be on top of them to knock them out. Hopefully they don't run towards the water. Now, when you noticed earlier when I started attacking that dinosaur, it runs towards the water. They tend to do that when they go in the fight or flight. You're going to get two options there. You are going to get flight or fight. They're going to either attack you or they're going to try and run away from you. When they're doing that, it means the health or torpidity is low. Now, what is torpidity? Torpidity is uh, this here. 
Torpidity, torpidity is basically that thing that you have where it tells you how resistant you are to uh, being knocked out. So once that, that torpidity there builds up, then you're going to get knocked out. And that's what we're trying to do with our dinosaurs. By knocking them, we're increasing the torpidity on them. And they're going to hopefully get knocked out before they die. There is a chance, obviously, you're going to kill them. Um, on all dinosaurs, that is. So there's a couple of things you want to do when you're taming. And that is, obviously, to try and avoid killing them. As I say, we're going to do this uh, all natural. So we're not going to build a taming pen or anything like that. We could build a taming pen, but the only thing we're going to keep an eye out is a low level dinosaur. So we're going to try and find that turtle dude again. Hopefully he's around somewhere. Or another dinosaur that's going to be easy to tame. And we're going to just... I can hear something. As you can see, we can't see anything at all, so just be wary of that. There could be dinosaurs in here, so we'll just get what we can. I'm going to continue gathering a few bits and bobs here. You can see these trees are starting to come back here. They tend to uh, not spawn around your base. You, there is an area around your base that uh, things won't spawn back. Uh, that will determine on what you're setting, either your single player or what your server set at. Usually it gives a nice area of where it's going to not grow back any kind of uh, shrubbery. And that's based off where you place the, uh, the foundation that's what i'm looking for the foundation so wherever you place the foundations it places an area around that's gonna basically stop you from uh yeah throwing it back okay so that's light so i'm gonna put the wood in and then i'm gonna just transfer over what i can yeah transfer all there we go right so we're gonna pop back once it's daytime i'm gonna continue gathering what i can and then hopefully when it is daytime we can find a dinosaur too Team. and welcome back everybody and the sun's just coming up now so we can finally see what we're actually doing and good enough that our campfire has decided to go out as well so we've got ourselves some charcoal don't worry about the charcoal keep it in there for now you know it's it's going to become useful at a later stage but right now we don't need to worry about it just keep it in your box when you need to empty it but we'll leave it there for now right the other thing i want to talk about is, is we're going to actually just expand expand our little uh fort a little bit here uh, by another three uh, blocks, number three. Yeah, number three, I think that should do us. So I've done two foundations and I'm going to drag these onto my bar. And the reason why I'm going to drag them onto my bar is because I want to explain something. So when you're placing your foundations here, you get the choice of dropping one at a time, like so. Now, if you didn't have it on your hot bar, if you were using the option to go into your inventory and you can right click and place or whatever then you're going to end up having to go back into your inventory, back to crafting, and then click on the foundation. However, because it's on my hotbar, if I press the number 5 now, it will actually craft a new one for me. Because I'm only one short, that's nice and easy for me, I can see it's ready, it'll tell me it's ready, and I can place it down. The other thing I want to say as well is, is building something like this is cheap and cheerful. It's done the job that we needed to do when it was a one block job. We've made it a four block just to make it a little bit more comfortable for us. Expect to not have this as your main building because, well, this isn't the best area you want to kind of sit to. It's got low resources, it's low everything else, it's got low dinosaurs. It's going to be an easy place to start off with, but it's good for home for now. That being said, the resources it takes for this, you're going to lose. You're going to gain some of it back. However, without mods, you cannot pick this back up. This is set in place and it's here. If I if I want to remove it, I can either repair it or I can demolish it. I I can't I can't really do anything with it. So bear that in mind. But when we come to replacing it with wood, then you're gonna get some of these resources back. Not all, but we're gonna get a little bit back. It just gives you like a little trickle of resources back. Uh, for building a replacement but we want to build wood because right now a dodo could smash this down and i'm not joking a dodo could smash this down the dodo comes along and starts pecking at it because you pissed it off it's going to break thatch every dinosaur could break thatch most dinosaurs could break wood but at least it's most and not every so we're going to upgrade it but to do that we need levels now whilst we were working during the night and we built a couple of bits of bobs i built two more storage boxes because well, I had lots of berries. 
And we've got ourselves another point to spend. So I'm going to place my point again into movement speed because I'd rather be able to run away from the dinosaur than running towards it with lots of weight. At level 7, we can't do much. However, there is something we definitely need to do. And that is, well, there's actually a few things we want to do. We can choose to go for our hide sleeping bag because we're going to need it. We're also going to need a mortar and pestle and we're going to need narcotics. Mortar and pestle and the narcotics go hand in hand. But you can't do the narcotics without the mortar and pestle. And we've only got 9 engram points. You want to have a look here. So there's some other things we may want to use. Well, actually, we can get a dinosaur without actually doing anything of this sort. But I want to be able to respawn more than I want to take a dinosaur. So I'm going to get a hide sleeping bag. We're going to need hide for that, which we should have enough on us to get done. Now, the other options we have is do we get a slingshot so we can tame bigger dinosaurs or do we get the molten pestle to prepare ourselves for later down the line? Well, I kind of want to defend myself just in case we get a dinosaur that's going to get really pissy with us when we're messing around. So I'm going to get a slingshot because it's good early on defense. Well, there's nothing really much else. The next target I want is our mortar and pestle. Our next big target is level 9 bowlers and then level 11 where we get our wood for our building hopefully we'll hit level 11 on this episode we might not it might have to be in the next episode but fingers crossed we'll get it the unfortunate thing is this is completely standard there's no mods on this so the xp level is a little bit slow and it's a pain in the ass frustrating for somebody who has a server that runs on higher xp so it's less of a grind and also you get better engrams per level as well because there is a lot of engrams not only that, but you've got Aberration, you've got Scorched Earth, you've got Extinction, you've got Genesis. You've Yeah, you've got a lot of engrams that you need to go in. And I'll explain a little bit about that in another episode. But right now, we're learning the basics, so let's get back to doing business. Right. Another thing I want to point out before we move on is when you transfer all, you'll notice that you don't transfer everything on your hotbar here. Consider your hotbar your tool belt. It has a level of weight. And it'll add that to your character. However, when you're transferring all, you are only transferring that is that is in your backpack. Even though you don't have a backpack. You, you, and you've got pretty big damn pockets, you know what I mean? However, that's how it works. So, the first thing we are going to do is we're going to tame a Lystrosaurus. I, I've come to know this as a lap dog, but this thing is undervalued seriously undervalued because when you tame one of these it gives you xp boosts and not only that but you can tame it without knocking it out consider all taming it's the best way to describe taming is you're going to knock a dinosaur senseless and then bribe it with food you bribe it with certain foods it means you tame it a little bit quicker some dinosaurs get a little bit annoyed at you and they won't be tameable or they'll be extremely hard to tame and you've got to do other things to kind of get around that but we'll discuss that as and when but first of all we're going to feed Azelberry to our Lystrosaurus. Now you can see here there's a couple of things. There's one thing we're going to miss which is the uh, little purple bar that you'll get when you've knocked out a dinosaur but don't worry about that right now we can deal with that on the next dinosaur. Right now we are worried about the taming effectiveness and that little brown coloured bar at the bottom. 7.7% and we have to wait until he's hungry again. He's a level 4 Lystrosaurus and he's a male. He's got full health, energy and his food's not too bad. And our taming effectiveness is 99.2%. Not the best thing in the world but well it's our first dinosaur so let's not complain. So you're going to have to feed this a few more times to basically bribe him so he can be your friend. It's pretty much what you're going to expect. This is by far the easiest tame in the game. I don't think there's any easier tame other than the fact that you're following them around and stuffing them with berries. I've got 100 berries just on my hotbar. I also have plenty of berries in my box. I can wander around, I can do whatever I need to do. But then I can just pop back and feed him and his tame is going to go up. Now, the other thing you're going to point out here is that the taming effectiveness does go down. There's nothing much we can do with a Lystrosaurus because it will only take the food that it's asking for, which is the Zulberry, which is the blueberries that I've got on the bar. So there's not much more you can do, so, but it's not going to drop down that much. And realistically, we're only getting one level, so, you know, whatever. Taming also drops down slowly. 
However, with the Lysosaurus and the fact that it's such low level, we're probably not going to lose any taming effectiveness here. So we're good to go. Bigger dinosaurs will lose that taming effectiveness as and when, depending on what you're feeding them and how long you're waiting around and all sorts of things that it's going to take into account. So let us complete this tame. So I'm going to break off here and we're going to come back once the taming is done. I'm going to keep going back and forth, picking up more berries and just doing general bloody da stuff. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to probably put up some more walls and then we'll come back. Actually, before we do that, while he's in his face we'll have a look at our hide sleeping bag before we disappear uh we're gonna need fiber and hide we've already got all the fiber we need let's have a look and see if we've got our hide we've got hide somewhere where's our hide in our third box always in the last box you check and by the looks of it we may be too hide short we are we're too hide short but I don't want to wander off too far because I'm taming my Lysosaurus. But let's go and see if we can find ourselves a dodo. We're going to get our spear out. Now this is about the time where you really don't want to die. Because if you die now, you're going to spawn elsewhere. And you're going to have to go and hunt your body down and do all sorts of other stuff. So just be careful. Keep an eye out for little dinosaurs. The little ones, though, can still hurt you. So be careful. There's a few dinosaurs we want to be careful of in this area. One of them is a... Dilophosaurus because it spits stuff at you. The other thing is these things here. They rob your shit. Die you little pig ant thing. Pegos. They rob your crap. I'm going to get my hatchet out because I want his skin. Well, there's nothing on it. Good. Give me your hide. So we've got enough hide now to uh, craft what we want to do. And I want to get away from anything else. So let's get the hell out of there. Before any more of his friends turn up and try and rob our crap. Pegos and them stupid birds are the two things that are the most annoying thing in this game. More so annoying that I don't have them disabled on this. Because I have them disabled. Uh, oh. oh it stole all my berries. Son of a bitch. There we go. So it stole our berries. Did it steal anything else? Just looks like it stole the berries. Good. But we've got two meat out of it, so we'll chuck a bit of, bit of wood in there. Two woods. I'll do. Chuck our meat in. Fight the fire. That'll be a good meal. At least I can enjoy his death. Okay, right. Let's get a sleeping bag. Now, the pros and cons of a sleeping bag. Pros is we're going to have somewhere we can respawn at. Cons are it's a one-time use. So when you've used it up, you're going to want to, uh, yeah, get another one. Pros and cons of making a thing is while you're crafting, you are basically sat there going dead slow and not being able to do anything. Now, again, another thing that's annoying on single player is you can't, put things on top of things or through things it's one of the settings it's, it's in the main game it's annoying uh, no clipping allowed when you uh, play on most servers they'll tend to take that off so you can clip so you can put things a little bit more compact it's a little bit unfair when you're doing it um, on single player so just bear that in mind when you come to do stuff like that but less of that more of feeding this bloody black dog more food so I shall be back once we've fed him up and got him tamed. See you all shortly. Okay, for some absolutely unknown reason, the Lashosaurus just decided to die on me. So, it had full food, yet it was just losing health as if it was being attacked. No idea why that was, but there you go. So we're back to the drawing board on taming. Not a problem, because we've now got ourselves a little bit of a hut. Now the fire is in the way, that's annoying. Um, we'll probably move the fire, as we have to jump to get in. But we've got ourselves something you know, a little bit more secure. We need to put a, a roof on this, a, a ceiling. Uh, but other than that, well, it needs a door. You know, it's, it, it's a square box, okay? We've got a job, right. The one thing we want to do is we want to craft ourselves a sling. Yeah, slingshot. We've got everything that we need, so we can just go ahead and craft that. And then I'm going to drop this off the box.
bar. Uh, now we can either place it, drop it or whatever, but I'm just going to chuck it into the box. Because we don't need it. Uh, we've got nine stones on us, we're probably going to need some more stones, so we'll drop the stones. And we will transfer everything else by pressing the T buttons. Transfer what we can into there. Uh, we've got our slingshot, we've got a couple of berries to keep us alive. We want the medjo berries, because we're going to use that as food. Now hopefully, we can find ourselves a dinosaur to tame. Now, I can see a dodo there, and I'm going to try and tame the dodo, because... Let's first of all drag our elbow, just so we've got to, oh we're dehydrated so we can jump in the water. The all the lovely sharks and the jellyfish, don't touch them jellyfish, they're horrible. Feed ourselves with what berries we've got, not many berries, oh before we crack on with this let's grab ourselves some meat. We can enjoy a good tasty meal after them bird, that bloody thing robbed our stuff. So the fireplace that's in the way can now be used. Right, let's chuck that in there. We'll chuck a bit of wood in there. Grab a couple of woods. That'll do us for now. Probably ain't gonna do it all, but it'll do. We'll be right. Okay, now obviously you can uh, drag it onto your hotbar, you can just press E and you can eat them. Right, let's get our ring shot. If you right click the slingshot, it'll drag it out. Left click. Kind of some gay ass thing. If you right click, you can really get it going. Look at that. And yeah, that's about as good as it's going to be. But oh, is that a dillo? That's a dillo, right? Then things spit at you, so try and avoid them if you can. Oh, we got ourselves a dodo. Look close at dillo, but hopefully we can get away with it. Right, knock it on its head. Oh, it's out. It's out cold. Excellent. Look at that. Jobs are good. Em. What we want to do now is, uh, as you can see, it's got a little purple bar saying unconscious. It's almost dead. We nearly killed it. Uh, we aimed for the head. Always aim for the head because that has more chance of knocking it out. As you can see, it is chomping away and we've got 27.8% tame. If we press back E on it, we'll get a little bit more information. So we can see it's got health, stamina, oxygen, food, weight, melee, movement, and torpidity. The torpidity... It's what I was talking about. When that reaches zero, it's going to wake up again. Hopefully, the medjo berries will be enough to tame it. It seems to be eating it pretty quick. Yeah, we're going to easily get it. So you can tell there we're going to get it. If, however, you're not going to get it, then what you need to do is you need to go into the inventory and the purple, or dark purple or blacky colored narco berries. Um, I'm going to call you pebbles. My little pebbles. There we go. We can pick him up if we want to. And we can throw him down. We can E. Give it some more options. So behavior. And there's a couple of things we want to do first. Right. As I was saying. So yeah. If he was going to wake up before we were going to get the tame. Then what we could do is we could feed it. We could feed it narco berries. And all you do is you place it into. Get off me. Inventory. You place it into the inventory like so. And you press E to force it to eat. That would have forced it to eat. Now, right now, it's going to be... What's it going to do? It's on aggressive, so it's going to attack any target. It's also following me. Um, and it's not going to mate. So if I start wandering off now, like so, he's going to plop it along. But you can see it's at quite a distance so something could come in and eat my dodo. And it's making a racket as well. To alter that, if we press on E, we've got a couple of things we can do. We want to check our behavior. Dodos are not great at attacking, so we're going to tell it to passive. You don't want it to passive flee because it'll run away and you'll lose it. Neutral means it's going to kind of, yeah, be neutral. Passive is the best option on this case. We can also change the behavior to low. And we can also change the distance it's going to follow to low. And that was medium, not low. So it's going to follow me a little closer now. You can do all the groups if you want. You can add it to a group or a class. But all classes of dodos going to be in there. But we don't need to do any of that at the moment. You've got your harvest settings. So you can disable it to collect anything. Uh oh. That's the dillo. Yep. Yeah. Ah, it's blinded me. It's also attacking my dodo. Can't see anything. Dillo's down. The dillo's down. So... Yeah, the Dillo's giving us some injury there, so we're fine, we're good. 
Right, come on, Pebbles. Let's head back to base. Now, one thing to do when you're around your mates, don't press T. Uh, even you, even. Uh, it's not you, because you means... That's the one, J. Don't press J around your mates. Where's Pebbles? Come on, Pebbles. God damn, you're slow. Let's get him back to base. Don't press the J button. That's the button I was looking for. Don't press J, because J is every dinosaur in the vicinity will follow you. If you're in your mate's kind of yard with his dinosaurs, he is going to be pissed. Especially if he's the same as what uh, any of the Skyview members are. And they like to line them up nicely. They'll all run at you. You, on the other hand, stops all dinosaurs. All dinosaurs in the area will stop them all following you. Uh, you can target one dinosaur if you want. And you can press the T. That's why I had T on my brain. And that one dinosaur will follow you. There you go. There you go, following again. And block him. Right, our first dinosaur. Yay, we got a dodo. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's a dinosaur. It's going to keep us company. Fuck you all. It's a dodo. Dodos are great. They can follow you around and carry some stuff for you, so, you know, it's kind of cool. And it's a little companion. He's going to be there. He's nice. He's going to level up with you. I'd love to have got the Lossosaurus, but for some reason, I don't know why it kept dying. I'm kind of annoyed at that because that would have given us a good XP boost. But, hey, well, it is what it is. Right. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to spend our last point. Movement speed. I like to run away. And when it gets rid of that, eight points. We've got eight more points to spend. I kind of want a door. I want a door and I want a ceiling. I'll worry about everything else later. We're almost at wood. So I'm going to craft a door and some ceilings. And um, we're not going to have the stuff here because um, tons of crap here. Now, if you were playing on a multiplayer server, this is about the time you'd want to be moving all your stuff into uh, indoors. Get rid of all this here. There we go. Yeah, this is about the time you want to be moving your stuff indoors because, uh, well, it's a little bit safer. I mean, it's about as safe as it's going to be when it's thatch, but, you know, it's thatch. We'll live with it. It'll do. That's about all I've got. Okay, so let's see if we can get ourselves... Yes, four ceilings and a door. Uh, access inventory. I'm going to take all that out there. Okay, that one's dead, but it'll be right. I'm going to demolish this. There we go. That's out of the way. I can now step in. And you can bring your dodo indoors. Uh, yeah, he kind of, you know, he'll be fine. What you want to do when you get some high level dinosaurs, or at least when you want to get dinosaurs that you're not really fussed they're going to be eaten by predators, is you want to get yourself an enclosure. But at this level, you're not going to get yourself an enclosure. It's, it's too expensive. You need to keep yourself safe. So you need to start thinking about Uno Numero. Or Numero Uno. Whatever way you want to say it. And you want to place these down here. We're protected from the weather. And I want to place my campfire in here because it's going to keep me nice and warm at night. So I'm not going to have hunger problems. I'm going to place this down. Now, one thing to quickly note. Pick up allowed for 16 seconds. After that, timer is gone. You cannot click on it and pick it up. You have to destroy it to remove it. So just bear that in mind. That's the last thing I want to comment on. We've got our door. Look at that. We are moving places. We've got ourselves a big ass building. It is what it is. You know, we can pick up that dodo. Bring him indoors. Little, little guy. My companion. Put you in the corner. Oh, we put baby in the corner. And I'm going to look to... There we go. Craft. What do I need to craft another? We're going to need a flint, stone and thatch. Let's see if we've got enough of each. I don't think I've got enough thatch. Got some stone there. That's enough stone. Wood. Fiber. Uh, we've got a little bit of flint. Grab a flint. We need some thatch, so all we basically do is if we head on and get our pickaxe. Go ahead and grab some thatch. We're going to need a little bit. Oh, there we go. 
Now we've not we've got a little bit of meat so we can eat the meat. Keep ourselves nice and topped up. I said to eat two at a time. So I'm gonna build a new campfire. And I commented on basically placing. You can place by pressing the E button or right clicking and clicking place. And you can do it just like that. Again, you get the same option, 30 seconds, you can drop it down. And I'm going to place one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to put, no, nope, can't put the charcoal back in. Forgot about that. I'll put the meat in, I'll light the fire. We are nice and toasty. I know, as you notice, the two meat kind of almost filled me up. I need some water, so if you were going to just pack it in for the day, you chuck yourself into the water like so. There obviously are things you can do to make this a little bit easier later down the line, but right now we are. Well, we're drinking the pee that we pee in the water and all that kind of funky stuff. Excellent. We've got ourselves a door door smashing building. We're safe. Good night. Well, that's it for this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section if you've got any questions, comments, ideas, suggestions, anything you like. Or if you just want to comment and say, you know, you know, whatever about the video. It's all cool. It's all good. Don't mention about the McDodo. My Dodo gets a little upset if you start talking about him. Oh, he's very pissed off. I don't know what's up with him. Well, hopefully you like this video. Let me know if um, if you have enjoyed it. I'm trying to do some, some things a little bit differently with this series. Trying to make it a little bit more entertaining. Um, because, well, Ark's a brilliant game. It's a fun game. We're playing completely standard. We may move the series over to the Ark server. Uh, if it generates a little bit more interest. Because, well, placing the Ark, playing on the Ark server will be a lot better, but there are some things on there that are going to be a little bit different to a beginner. So, I'm kind of playing it without any mods, so you can all see it. If you'd like to know anything about mods or anything like that, then I can even comment on you, set, uh, like, personally. Uh, if there's a lot of you asking the same questions, then I will do a video on mods. Because there is an absolute minefield, and personally, some of the mods make it a little too easy to play. Uh, some of the server settings can also make it a little too easy to play as well. There's a few things you want to keep an eye out when you're doing it. However, there are some quality of life um, mods that the uh, Team Sky Duke, um collaboration that I have kind of introduced me to. And I always play with the mods when I'm playing for entertainment values for myself rather than doing this guide. Well, thank you very much everybody for checking it out. And thanks for the much love I've had on the series so far. Hopefully it's helping those of you who are either getting back into the game or those of you who've just got the game. But until next time everybody, take care for now and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye bye for now. Bye bye Pebbles.